As expected, Bunga's quote-unquote assistance almost leads to Kifaru tumbling off a cliff. <laughs> Meanwhile, Patch finally gets up close and personal with Mighty Thunderbolt, played by Barry Bostwick, and his sidekick Lil Lightning, played by Jason Alexander. Newman. Um, actually, Newman is played by Wayne Knight. Jason Alexander plays George. Wait, really? Man. Wait a minute, how'd you even get into this video? Well, let's just say that little birdie of mine gave me all the access codes to every reviewer's recording stream. And I'm just gonna hazard a guess that this little birdie was Nostalgia Kid? I guess I should have known watching both Fifty Shades films would turn him into a Matrix-level peeping Tom. Yep, E.L. James movies will do that to ya. We talked about this, Kion. I know, Dad, but there's something going on. He just wants to ruin it. You may have ruined 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 it. Hey, Simba. You're as cold as ice. You're willing to throw shade at your son. Also, it's best for me to mention that because we're entering this show's second season, you're going to see a little design change on the character Louie, as well as a new voice provided by... Cree Summer, the legendary lady behind number five, Cleo and Susie Carmichael. My god, she is queen. Ready or not, here I come. Soon as I eat this banana. <laughs> Can't elephants and lions live together in peace? Well, maybe if you stop doing a shaky Emma Thompson impression, then yes, peace could be reached. Am I right, boys? <laughs> All kidding aside, it's nice to see Harvey Beaks accept his true role as queen. Meanwhile, the Guardians get acquainted with Kurt Russell, and he offers to take them to his own planet. But the raccoon, baby Treebeard, and... Oh yeah, that cyborg chick who's the sister to Martian Nateri stay behind to fix the broken ship. When they get ransacked by the Ravagers. Who kidnap Bradley Coon and baby Treebeard. And the cyborg chick is like, Sweet dreams, Navi Roka. Ooh, my only regret was wearing a cup. Also, a great impression of the Cowardly Lion, Bestie. Uh, I don't feel so good. Cover the thick of it, 40 wigs wouldn't be bad. Don't you start a coup! Take a look at this up. That is beautiful. I don't know about you guys, but the artwork here actually kind of reminds me of the stuff that RJ would actually make. You know RJ, the, the guy behind the, the, the Tintin books. You know him. Since when did you like pumpkin innards? Tui! Since never. <laughs> Dude, you just broke his favorite bowl. John, why do you put up with this cat anyway? Fair enough. I've seen the tunnel scene from that movie. It was actually pretty freaking awesome seeing Cat Susie do it the tunnel scene from Willy Wonka. She, she she even cursed. In a Tom and Jerry cartoon, she cursed. It's that was just an amazing moment. I'll I'll, I'll give I'll give that one credibility to that movie. The tunnel scene was awesome. Christmas. Bunka just dabbed. I legitimately just watched a scene in a show taking place in the world of The Lion King where a young honey badger just did a dab. Well, I suppose it could be worse. We could have watched him whip and or nene. Guess it's the lesser of two evils. Or three. I don't know. We then meet this Mara as well as her incompetent sons. She's apparently after a new animal skin blanket, meaning she's the monkey equivalent of Cruella de Vil. Ew, Lambert's a sheep licker. I guess this explains why Bellwether isn't too fond of him. But he was counted... Davey! 
Apparently, Rafiki is telling Makini where both the good and bad lines of the past can be heard. Angels are in the sky, and the devils lay in images of fire. Much like Sauron from Lord of the Rings. A fiery lion? Dude, that's awesome! You know, if the Pride Lands were like YouTube, then these two would probably be the Bob Show and Raven Fox of the animal community. Well, personally, I see myself as more of the Nala type, but I can kind of see where you're coming from with that comparison. I'm not sure if I see it. I mean, how exactly am I like Kovu? Well, you two are fearless, cunning, have sharp instincts, and you both don't take crap from anybody, especially those who oppose you. Cough, Derek Savage, cough. Yes, always. Screw that Savage. Plus, you both have nice flowing locks of hair on your head. Granted, yours is probably more well-groomed than his. Damn straight it is. Oh, I thank you. We all know Hadithi is a bird who never thinks of himself. When a hero like Hadithi returns to the Pride Lands... That is the time when it's best to flee in terror wait. Blast it, Rafiki! Stop smudging my cue cards with baobab fruit! Oh, hey, look, it's Curious George's owner. What is with those eyes? They look like they've seen some crap. All the other bulls ran around Gee, they're going the extra mile to be casting home on the range, aren't they? Nah, too farmhouse for my taste. What an honor! Just assure me that you won't place them in just one basket anymore. They'll stay more clean that way, right, guard? Ah, uh, yes, your majesty. <laughs> yeah! Yep, affirmative. Nothing to worry about, troops. We'll stop off at the watering hole on the way back home. Now, let's move! Remind me to glue his mane to an oak branch when we get back. You said it. Poe! Oh, you guys are just being silly! Shut up, Bunga! And now, for your amusement, Kion and Jasiri dancing to random songs. Enjoy! <laughs> 